if it, that's an investigation, it's a investigation. Well, as we saw earlier, that was New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez's pithy reaction to the FBI report on Brett Kavanaugh. It seems like he has adopted the same language choice that Lindsey Graham's adopting. Welcome to the new United States Senate. Anyway, it's a sentiment shared by most Senate Democrats, although they may not have used those particular words. It's a sentiment also shared by Christine Blasey Ford's legal team, which was furious that the woman whose accusations led to that investigation wasn't even interviewed as part of it. In a letter to FBI Director Christopher Wray, the legal team calls the investigation conducted over the past five days, quote, a stain on the process, on the FBI, and our American ideal of justice. With me now is Ben Wittes, MSNBC legal analyst and editor-in-chief of Law Fair. He's also a senior fellow at the Brookings Institute, and he knows Brett Kavanaugh personally. I think you call him a friend? Uh, well, do you think he's still I, a friend I, now? I, I do, but I, I, I mean, I... After what I wrote this week, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't consider it that way. So, would you have written that piece? Um, you wrote a piece in The Atlantic um, that basically, I know Brett Kavanaugh, you, you, you sort of regret, you, were, you publicly write that you sort of regret that you have come to this conclusion. Would you have come to that conclusion before Dr. Ford and his testimony, before the controversy, where you, with his first confirmation hearing, did you find that satisfactory? Oh, very much so. Okay. I mean, and in fact, one of the reasons that I uh, vouched for his character was that a lot of people were accusing him of uh, lying in that, and I thought those allegations didn't have merit, and said so, and said nice things about him and his character in that context, and that's one of the reasons I felt uh, it felt it necessary to comment separately on the hearing last week. You're obviously extraordinarily uh, familiar with how the law enforcement process works, background checks, how this all this stuff works. So I'm going to posit a theory here. Because one of the things that has been a head scratcher for a lot of us is why Judge Kavanaugh was so reluctant to just admit, yeah, I may have, may, may have liked beer a little bit too much in high school and college. It's not been a problem since, and there's, there's been no record to indicate. Um, but walk me through the background check system. You know, they kept saying he'd been through six of these. It, it, at how specific when it comes to questions about alcohol and questions about if heavy drinking does it get? Is it possible he was worried about looking like he was contradicting a previous background check, which of course would have led to lying to the FBI? So, I, you know, I don't want to speculate about motives, mm -hmm. and I don't want to speculate about, you know, facts not in evidence. And I want to be clear that I'm generally familiar with the background check process, but I've never been through it, and I'm not. You know, it's not something You've I've been studied called, carefully. I'm sure. I have been called many, people. many yes, times. As I have, um, yeah. Look, questions about abuse of uh, alcohol and illegal drugs are routinely asked. And um, <clears throat> the, uh, they go, these in background investigations go back a ways. And so, you know, if you imagine that there was, uh, you know, a certain amount of uh, very heavy drinking early in his, you know, late teenager and early right. adult life and that it didn't uh, continue into his significant professional life, you could imagine that they just wouldn't have talked to people who knew him in the relevant We put up period. a full screen here. We have, we have uh, SF86 questions on alcohol and one of the background checks here, 25.1, 24.2, 24.3, and 24.4 are the different questions. Alcohol in the last seven days, has your alcohol had a negative impact on your work? Have you ever been ordered, advised, or asked to seek counseling or treatment is another version. Have you ever voluntarily sought counseling or treatment? And then have you ever received <coughs> counseling or treatment? So these are the various types of questions when it comes to the, to the use of alcohol. And the first time he got this background check, we got to estimate he was probably, so it was in the Ken Starr era, so he's probably in his early 30s. Right. So, look, those words in the last seven years, and those words, um, have you ever sought treatment? Right. I remember um, the end last seven years was a buzz was a buzz time period during George W. Bush and that presidency when Democrats were convinced somehow he may have messed up a background check. Yeah. And look, there's there's a lot of opportunity. You know, these are time delineated questions. And the the have you ever questions <clears throat> tend to uh, refer to things like, you know, seeking treatment, gotten treatment, being ordered to get treatment. And so I think it's perfectly plausible that you know, you could have a period of being quite the frat boy mm -hmm. and it not necessarily show up, okay. it, you know, 10 years later, 15 years later. All right, let's talk about this investigation itself. What, what, what did you envision it was going to be in a one-week period? 
other than what we saw? Well, I certainly envisioned it would be more comprehensive than it was. That You know, you thought it could have been even more comprehensive than what we saw? Because I, I thought this is about the best we could expect. Well, <clears throat> so I, I, I guess I, I, I fully expected them to do what they did. But I also thought, you know, if you're trying to evaluate her story, one component of her story that the entire thing hinges on is, you know, a certain pattern, is her certain claims about alcohol use um, in, uh, you know, in a, in a particular culture. And they do not seem to have evaluated that claim, which strikes me as an important background. Do you think that's, to- that is important here? I mean, her claim is a very specific incident and a very specific time period. Um, some of these other claims, and, and I, I guess, are you trying to establish that he blacked out? And if you're trying to establish that he blacked out, then I guess I get what you're saying. It, it, you know, if, if your mission was to investigate this incident, then how far were you, should you have gone? Well, so, I, I mean, I guess, the, I guess the question is, you want to verify, first of all, whether you can corroborate the specific claims in this right. incident, but secondly, whether the specific claims in this incident incident are plausible given what you what you know. And it does seem to me that the question of, for example, is the house that uh, they were hanging out at on July first, nineteen eighty two, is it consistent? The floor plan of it is it consistent with her memory that she described of where this event happened? That would it seems to me tend to validate it. If he had a pattern of drinking uh, at that time in the fashion that she's describing them right. drinking at the time, that would tend to validate it. If he doesn't, that would tend to negatively uh, corroborate. So there are questions beyond the specific corroboration of the specific incident that strike me as germane. That said, I don't think a general inquest into his, you know, into his how much he liked yeah. beer in his late teens and early 20s is appropriate at all. I I'm, I'm, went too long with you, but one final question. Do you think a Justice Kavanaugh owes the public some sort of explanation for his partisan out, outburst? I think the partisan outburst was... You uh, believe that's disqualified? I, 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 think, it was, I think it was incredibly inappropriate, yeah. and, and that and alone... For you, it was disqualified. If I were a senator, that alone would give me a, a real problem voting to confirm him. Uh, that said, you know, once you are confirmed as a justice, you get a vote. And the result of getting a vote is that you kind of get to be whoever you want to be. And so it is ultimately going to be up to him yeah. whether and how he tries to establish that uh, we should have confidence in him. Right. So it is on him. It's on him. That's a fair point. Ben Wittes, a lot of wisdom with you always, Tony. Thank you for coming on. And sharing Good to that. see you. Nice to see you. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.